Over recent years, we have been getting remasters of classic games such as Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, and Ratchet and Clank, including a couple of brand new additions to the franchise, such as Crash 4 It's About Time and Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. With a potential Spyro 4 coming out, what would happen if we got a remaster for the Legend of Spyro Trilogy? Let's talk about it. What's going on guys? My name is Warfall and welcome back to the channel. So within the past week or so, the idea of a potential like remaster for the Legend of Spyro Trilogy has crossed my mind. Obviously, all of this started with the Crash Insane Trilogy, which is a remaster of the classic Crash games, followed on by Reignited Trilogy for Spyro a year after, and sort of a remaster, I believe it is, for Ratchet & Clank in 2016. And then of course, this year and last year, we got a brand new addition to the Crash series and the Ratchet & Clank series. The most recent one being Rift Apart for Ratchet & Clank. Obviously, we know that a Spyro 4 game is going to happen. I've spoken about this in the previous videos, but what would happen if we gave The Legend of Spyro a chance as well? I'm not entirely sure about a sequel to the trilogy itself, but what would happen if we got a remaster for the trilogy and made it so much better than it currently is? Because everyone can see some down flaws in the series, but I think we could fix that. So some cases of what I'm talking about here is we can look at Spyro's design specifically, or in general, the designs of all the characters. If we compare them from the first two games, compared to Dawn of the Dragon, which chronologically is set three years after the events of the Eternal Night, the designs completely change. I mean, it's fair enough to say, for example, that Spyro, Cinder, and Sparks all aged inside of the crystal, but Literally, their designs had a massive change, and also Cinder wasn't really much of a black dragoness anymore in the third one. Her scales were kind of more of like a darkish purple, but I think there were some mods that people did where it actually gave Cinder the correct color scheme in regards to her base color being black, because she's the black dragoness, she's not the purple dragoness. The purple dragon belongs to Spyro. The point is, one area that could easily be looked at is redesigning the character models and to make them flow more consistently with the timeline. So, A New Beginning to the Eternal Night pretty much is back to back, but Eternal Night to Dawn of the Dragon is of course three years, so it would be nice to sort of see a, a transition that works compared to what we did get originally back in 2007 and 2008. I think another aspect that definitely could be looked at would be the voice casting. So Spyro and Ignitus, just as two examples, obviously including the other Guardians and so forth, they were pretty consistent with their actors. So Elijah Wood was always Spyro, we had Gary Oldman as Ignitus, Kevin Michael Richardson as Terrador, and so on. But when it came to characters like uh, Cinder and Sparks, the voice actors and actresses changed throughout the course of the entire trilogy. Sparks literally changed three times, and I believe it was the same for Cinder as well. So one thing I think we could do in this case is stay with the one actor, because this is sort of what happened with Reignited Trilogy. So in the original Spyro games, Tom Kenny wasn't the voice of Spyro until Ripto's Rage, and of course, Year of the Dragon following that. But the first Spyro game was a completely different actor. However, in Reignited Trilogy, they got Tom Kenny to basically do all the dialogue for Spyro for the first game. And then obviously, I'm assuming he redid it for the second and the third one, because of course, Tom Kenny is the voice in all three of them. 
So right there, that is another thing that could definitely be looked at, which is basically fixing the voice casting situation. In regards to the character design situation, it basically goes for everything, so the graphics in general. And of course, we've now got the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X and S, and the graphics are phenomenal these days. So, potentially, the graphics could become more lifelike, and that will just bring more life to the series as a whole. And I think that would be a huge step up for this specific trilogy. Another thing to consider would be a open world type of dynamic. So, I haven't played the first two in a very long time. The one I remember the most is Dawn of the Dragon, but Dawn of the Dragon, for example, the only way you were ever able to, say, get to the Valley of Avalar was to actually play the level Valley of Avalar. Like, you couldn't just go there freely, like, after the story was finished, say, from Dragon City and travel all the way to Valley of Avalar without having to go to the chapter menu and select the level, basically. The idea of having a open world environment would pretty much allow for players to explore the whole landscape rather than having to only go there because of a specific level. It would also open up the opportunity for side quests and a lot of other stuff to be done which will allow for a bigger and better experience. I mean, you can take Spider-Man Remastered for example or Miles Morales where you have literally all of New York you can explore and not just the story, but you have a bunch of side quests and side missions that's like a little mini story of its own as well. So I think this is something that'd be really cool to be seeing in the Legend of Spire trilogy. You could even have some side missions potentially set after the events of Dawn of the Dragon. Maybe even a DLC, which would be cool to see, but it just depends on what could be done about it. Overall, I think having a remaster for the Legend of Spyro trilogy would be great, especially for current Spyro fans that may not know about this trilogy, which will basically allow for them to just get a new experience with Spyro rather than just the usual classic Spyro, which we all love and I certainly love it myself, but Legend of Spyro is a completely different side to the Spyro that we all know and love but it gives people a lot more to basically explore and learn. With that, that's pretty much all I got to say for this. I know it was a little brief, obviously, but it was just the general idea that came across my mind and I thought it'd be cool to talk about with you guys. So, what do you guys think? Do you think it might be a good idea to have a remaster for the Legend of Spyro trilogy? If so, you can let me know down below in the comments, and you can also let me know why it may not be a good idea, because everyone's opinions are valid, and yeah. Along with that, if you guys are new to the channel and you do like what you see, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn bell notifications on to get notified of all of my uploads. We'll basically be looking at a bunch of Spyro related content, such as I've spoken about Dark Spyro and Spyro 4, what my hopes and ideas are for the future of Spyro, particularly Spyro 4, and much more. We have a new concept series coming up too, known as the Spyroverse, as well as a Spyro Battlefront concept series based on EA's Star Wars Battlefront 2, or rather DICE, I should say, because EA kind of left it. Anyway, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and until next time, I hope you guys have a good day or a good night.